Welcome to this tutorial on using ROS2 with MATLAB and Simulink. Robotics is an incredibly diverse field with applications in many different environments and sectors, from humanoid robots and off-road vehicles to autonomous vessels and unmanned aerial vehicles. Each of these applications needs specialized design and simulation tools to handle the demands of different environments. This is where ROS2, combined with MATLAB and Simulink, can provide a powerful platform. These tools enable us to create, test, and refine the complex algorithms that each of these robotic systems require, all within a unified environment. Here are the outlines of this tutorial. In this first part, I'll provide an overview of ROS2, discuss a few common robotics applications, and outline some key differences between ROS1 and ROS2. Next, we'll go over the installation process for ROS2, MATLAB, Simulink, and the ROS Toolbox. By the end of this section, you'll be set up and ready to start experimenting with ROS2 in MATLAB and Simulink. Next, we'll delve into the ROS2 node and the concept of domain ID. Nodes in ROAS2 are modular, independent processes that handle specific tasks. The domain ID is critical for separating different ROAS2 systems on the same network. By configuring the domain ID, you can prevent nodes from accidentally communicating across ROS's different systems. Next, we'll discuss ROAS2 topics and quality of service, QoS. Topics are used for message passing between nodes, and QoS settings determine how these messages are transmitted. To move on, services in ROS2 allow for request-response communication between nodes, and actions are used when a node needs to initiate a task that may take time to complete, such as moving a robotic arm to a specific position. Parameters in ROS2 provide a way to configure nodes without modifying code. They allow us to change certain aspects of node behavior dynamically. Next, we'll cover how to log and visualize data in ROS2. By the end, you'll know how to capture, log, and visualize data to understand system and diagnose issues. To move on, timing and synchronization are crucial in robotics for coordinating sensor data, motor commands, and other processes. We'll discuss how to work with ROS2's time system and ensure your system remains synchronized. Next, we'll explore how to generate and deploy ROAS2 nodes from MATLAB and Simulink, and how to debug an external mode in Simulink. We'll walk through the workflow to show how you can quickly prototype and deploy nodes. Finally, we'll discuss model-based design with ROS2 MBD in Simulink allows us to design, simulate, and validate algorithms in a virtual environment before deployment. This approach is highly beneficial for robotics, as it minimizes risks and reduces development time. Integrating MBD with ROS2 enables a more streamlined workflow for building complex robotic systems, from initial design to real-world testing and deployment. Here's the learning path we'll be following throughout this tutorial. Let's get started with an overview of ROS2. In this session, we'll cover three main topics. What is ROS2? Why use MATLAB and Simulink to enhance the ROS2 workflow? ROS1 versus ROS2. We'll compare ROS1 and ROS2 to understand the key improvements and why ROS2 is the preferred choice for modern robotics applications. ROS2 stands for Robot Operating System 2, an open-source framework designed to help developers create robust and scalable robot applications. ROS2 offers a distributed architecture that is ideal for developing complex robotics applications. This architecture supports a wide range of functionalities, including perception, planning, and control. Additionally, ROS2 seamlessly integrates with embedded hardware, plant modeling, simulators, and various sensors. This comprehensive ecosystem enables developers to build sophisticated robotic systems that can effectively interact with and adapt to their environments. ROS2 can be understood as a combination of three core components, middleware, tools, and ecosystem. At its heart, ROS2 utilizes a middleware layer based on the Data Distribution Service, DDS, 
which facilitates efficient communication between distributed components. Let's look at an example to illustrate how ROS2 operates in practice. Imagine a sensor running within a simulator environment. This sensor continuously gathers data, such as distance measurements. Using ROS2, the sensor publishes this data to a network of other components. This seamless data exchange is made possible by ROS2's efficient communication framework, enabling real-time interactions and coordinated responses across the robotic system. ROS2 provides a comprehensive suite of tools designed to enhance development, debugging, and deployment processes. For instance, the logging and visualization tools enable developers to log and graphically represent data flows and system states, providing clear insights into the operation of complex robotic systems. The ecosystem of ROS2 includes a rich collection of libraries, community resources, and third-party integrations that together provide a robust foundation for building diverse robotic applications. Whether you're developing a manipulator, an off-road vehicle, aerospace systems, or marine robots, ROS2 offers the necessary tools and support. It also excels in areas such as perception, planning, control, and modeling. This extensive ecosystem empowers developers to create innovative solutions across multiple domains, leveraging shared knowledge and resources. One of the major benefits of using ROS2 is its ability to significantly reduce the need to or invent the wheel. By providing a comprehensive set of pre-built libraries and tools, ROS2 allows developers to leverage existing solutions for common robotics challenges. This means you can focus on innovating and refining your unique application, rather than spending time on foundational components that have already been developed and optimized by the ROS community. ROS2 offers a wealth of resources that can be leveraged in your projects. Open source projects. Utilize powerful open source projects like MoveIt2 for motion planning, OpenCV for computer vision, and Nav2 for navigation. These projects provide robust solutions for common robotics tasks. Multi-platform support. ROS2 is highly versatile, running on various operating systems including Ubuntu, Red Hat, iOS, Windows, and MicroROS, which extends its capabilities to microcontrollers. Multi-language support develop in the language that best suits your project needs, with support for C++, Python, MATLAB, and Simulink offering flexibility and ease of integration. Large community benefit from a vast and active community that contributes to continuous improvements, shares knowledge, and provides support, making it easier to find solutions and collaborate on projects. Together, these resources enable you to build sophisticated robotic applications efficiently without starting from scratch. Let's move on to why use MATLAB and Simulink for ROS2 applications. MATLAB and Simulink offer significant advantages for developing ROS2 applications, particularly in industrial contexts. First, these tools have a long-standing track record of reliability and effectiveness, widely adopted in both academic and industrial settings for developing complex systems. Secondly, MATLAB and Simulink are extensively used across various industries, including aerospace, underwater vehicles, and heavy machinery. This experience ensures that they are well-suited to handle the specific challenges and requirements of these fields. Furthermore, it provides a complete workflow that facilitates compliance with industry standards, ensuring that your software meets rigorous quality and safety requirements. Last but not least, by employing model-based design, MATLAB and Simulink help accelerate the development process while maintaining high product quality. This approach enables rapid prototyping, testing, and iteration, reducing the time needed to bring products to market. These benefits make MATLAB and Simulink invaluable tools for developing high-quality, industry-compliant ROS2 applications efficiently. Now, let's explore the key differences between ROS1 and ROS2 and understand why the transition to ROS2 is beneficial for modern robotics applications. Let's have a look at a brief history of ROS-1. ROS-1, 
or the first generation of the robot operating system, was introduced in 2007 at Stanford University. It aimed to build a framework that allowed processes to communicate with each other, plus some tools to help create code on top of that. In 2008, it was taken over by Willow Garage, a robotics research lab and incubator. The goal was to create a flexible framework for writing robot software, addressing the need for a standardized platform in the robotics community. In 2010, the first official release, ROS 1.0, marked the beginning of its widespread adoption. It provided essential tools and libraries for building and controlling robots. Between 2010 and 2012, ROS 1 evolved with regular updates and the addition of new features, driven by contributions from a growing community of developers, researchers, and companies. In 2013, Open Robotics took over primary development of ROS, and a new version has been released every year, while interest in ROS continues to grow. Between 2013 and 2018, multiple ROS distributions have been released, continuing to enhance the platform's capabilities and support a wide range of robotic applications. In 2020, ROS Noetic Ninjemis was released as the 13th ROS distribution. It's the last ROS 1 release, and its life is supposed to end in 2025. ROS 1 laid the foundation for a collaborative ecosystem, enabling the development and sharing of cutting-edge robotics technology. However, as the demands of robotics applications grew, the need for a more robust and versatile system led to the development of ROS 2. ROS 2 was conceived to address the limitations of ROS 1 and meet the evolving needs of modern robotics applications. Here's a look at its development timeline. In 2014, the development of ROS 2 began and announced at ROSCon, which is a ROS developers conference. The goal was to create a more robust and flexible framework that could support real-time systems, enhance security, and distributed computing. In 2015, the first alpha release of ROS 2, known as Ardent Apollone, was introduced. This release provided a foundational glimpse into the new architecture based on the data distribution service DDS middleware. Between 2016 to 2017, the beta releases of ROS were introduced. Between 2018 to 2023, multiple ROS 2 distributions were released, continuing to evolve by refining the system adding features, enhancing tooling, stability, performance, and expanding its ecosystem. The lastest ROS2 distribution ROS2 Jazzy Jalisco was released in 2024. ROS2 builds upon the strengths of ROS1 while addressing its limitations, offering a modern, scalable, and secure platform for the next generation of robotics applications. While ROS-1 has been instrumental in advancing robotics development, it has several limitations that prompted the creation of ROS-2. First, it's the gaps between prototypes and production. ROS-1 was primarily designed for research and prototyping, which often led to challenges when transitioning to production environments. The lack of robust tools and features necessary for industrial-grade applications made it difficult to scale solutions from the lab to the field. Secondly, it's the real-time control. ROS-1 struggled with real-time capabilities due to its communication architecture. This limitation made it unsuitable for applications requiring precise timing and synchronization, such as autonomous vehicles and industrial automation, where real-time control is critical. Next, it's the data integrity and security. Security features in ROS-1 were minimal which posed risks in applications where data integrity and confidentiality are crucial. Without built-in encryption or authentication, ROS-1 was not ideal for sensitive or mission-critical deployments. Last but not least, it's the multi-platform support. Although ROS-1 was primarily developed for Linux environments, it lacked robust support for other operating systems like Windows and Mac OS. This limitation restricted its use in diverse hardware and software ecosystems hindering broader adoption across industries. These limitations highlighted the need for a more versatile and secure framework, leading to the development of ROS2, 
which addresses these challenges and provides a more comprehensive solution for modern robotics applications. Let's have a closer look on the ROS-1 architecture. At the application layer on the top, the master node acts as the central coordinator in a ROS-1 system. It is responsible for managing the registration of nodes. The master node keeps track of all active nodes and their topics, services, and parameters. While the master node is integral to the functioning of a ROS-1 system, its centralized nature introduces potential bottlenecks and single points of failure. These limitations are among the reasons why ROS-2 adopts a decentralized architecture, eliminating the need for a master node and enhancing system resilience and scalability. As the robotics field advanced, the ROS community faced a critical decision. Whether to enhance ROS-1 or fundamentally redesign it to meet new demands. Ultimately, the decision was made to develop ROS-2, a new iteration that leverages modern technologies and methodologies to provide a robust, scalable, and secure framework. This approach ensures that ROS can continue to support cutting-edge robotics research and industrial applications, addressing the limitations of ROS-1 while paving the way for future innovations. ROS-2 introduced significant architectural changes to overcome the limitations of ROS-1 with two major developments being the removal of the master node and the introduction of the data distribution service DDS. Without a master node, nodes in ROS2 can discover and communicate with each other directly, improving reliability and flexibility. ROS2 leverages the data distribution service as its underlying middleware. DDS is a proven industry standard protocol that provides robust data exchange capabilities. It supports features such as real-time communication, quality of service, QoS security scalability. In summary, ROS2 offers significant advantages that streamline the development process and enhance productivity. By utilizing DDS as its underlying middleware, ROS2 provides a more robust and reliable communication framework. This means developers can spend less time debugging communication issues and focus more on building functional and efficient robotic applications. ROS2 comes equipped with a suite of advanced tools that simplify development workflows. These tools reduce the need to reinvent the wheel, allowing developers to leverage existing solutions for tasks such as debugging, visualization, and simulation. With less time spent on communication troubleshooting and tool development, Teams can dedicate more resources to designing innovative solutions and thoroughly testing their systems. This shift in focus enhances the quality and performance of the final product. Overall, ROS2 empowers developers to concentrate on creativity and innovation, driving forward the capabilities of modern robotics applications. Thank you for participating in this session on the overview of ROS2. I hope you found the information insightful and that it provides a solid foundation for your future work in robotics. As you explore the capabilities of ROS2, I encourage you to leverage its advanced features and tools to innovate and push the boundaries of what's possible in your projects. In the next session, I will give you a step-by-step -step guidance to installing ROS2, MATLAB, Simulink, and ROS Toolbox. By the end of the session, you'll have a fully operational ROS2 environment. I look forward to our next session.